two stories we're going to focus on today. One is um, a soldier from the First World War, Percy Onions, who died in uh, just after the armistice. I think it was November the 16th, 1918. Died of his wounds at Tutin Military Hospital. We're going to visit, revisit his grave. And uh, we're also going to go to uh, graves from the Second World War. Um, but interestingly enough, these are German graves. Uh, German pilots uh, from a Dornier bomber which crash landed um, just the other side of Loughborough uh, on November the 14th, 1940. We're going to take a little detour through Woodthorpe on the way down. Now, this is right on the urban edge of Loughborough, um, or the suburban edge in a sense. Um, the fields to the right of us probably ripe for redevelopment, especially under the new kind of legislation that the government are putting through here in the UK, which seems to say, if you're a big builder and there's a bit of land, uh, I'll just build on it. You can see here, this is a, a beautiful country lane. It's actually called, or it was called, Herrick Way. Um, so one of the richest men in the country uh, in Victorian times was a, a Mr Herrick who built uh, one of the, the local sort of uh, mansions here called uh, Bow Manor Hall. Um, that was his estate. Um, not quite sure what made him rich, but uh, this here is, is his own, one of his own personal trackways that he built so he could take his awesome car and survey his land, you know, from the comfort of his, uh, of his seat, I suppose. Hello, right there. Here we are at Loughborough Cemetery, the back entrance, basically. Yeah, it doesn't look too good at the moment with uh, some pointy railings here. It's to stop, stop the spirits getting out. Yeah, that's right. It's to stop the dead. But believe leaving. me, it gets more interesting when we go inside. Welcome to Loughborough Cemetery. So where we're going now is um, the part of the cemetery that's dedicated to those that died during the Second World War. Actually, there's, there's plenty of other graves dotted around the, from the time of the Second World War of, as well. Um, but I think this has been put aside for um, those who were killed in action. Um, and as, we, as you'll see, um, here's the, uh, the graves for the Dornier medium bomber uh, crew. Um, and it's, um, where is it? No, that's not it there. Oh, where is it? That's oh, these are German graves here. Yeah, they're prisoners. These were prisoners of war who yeah. died here in Loughborough. Yeah, and, here's, here's the bomber. And although they were, let's face it, our enemies or the enemies of um, Britain, at the time, um, their memory is held in regard. If you can remember, or remember from history anyway, uh, the bombing of Coventry, 14th of November, 1940, which was one of the worst um, bomb bombing situations, if you like, from the, from the Blitz that virtually obliterated the centre of Coventry, um, 450 um, German planes were involved in that attack um, and strangely enough only one German plane was actually shot down um, and it crashed not far from where we are now actually just the other side of Loughborough uh, it was a Dornier bomber uh, what they used to call the flying pencil because it was long and thin and it had a four-man crew um, and these are the graves of the crew that uh, perished in that crash. Um, and there are four members of the crew. Would the crew just have been four? Yeah, it's a four man crew, yeah. And all four in a line remembered here in uh, Loughborough Cemetery. So here is the grave of uh, the captain of the crew, Carl Dilphy. Um, he was obviously the older member of the crew and actually served in the Spanish Civil War. Um, 
you know, we're obviously on the side of the uh, the fascists in the the infamous Condor division, and uh, it was while he was um, fighting with the Luftwaffe in, in the in the war there, the Spanish Civil War, that he got um, he got an Iron Cross, and uh, there's a mystery that when his body was found. Um, people were trying to find the Iron Cross and couldn't find it so whether it's still there to be found in a farmer's field uh, or maybe one day detectorists will, uh, will discover This four-man crew actually got a full military funeral um, and there was a procession of their coffins through the streets of Loughborough which was, um, if you look at old photographs, was extremely well attended um, and uh, just, just goes to show really that at the end of the day the, these were men just like our boys, you know, who are dying on the other side in Germany. So um, hopefully they got as good a reception when they passed as uh, as these four guys did. Look at lovely avenue of yew trees. Yeah, yew trees. Yew trees are some of my favourite trees. Well, they probably are my favourite tree. And See them uh, in every every uh, graveyard, don't you? There's always at least one yew tree somewhere. Deeply associated with spirits. Yeah. The old ways. Now, which way is Percy? We're looking for Percy. His name's Percy Onions. And oh, you think it's down there? It's, it's in there in, in almost splendid isolation. As you can see, a lot of the graves, if they were here, are no longer here. Or it's just open space waiting for new graves, but they decided to focus putting new graves elsewhere. So here you can see it's quite eight secluded and there's we're surrounded by some wonderful specimen trees and it, it's, it's very quiet. Um, it's a beautiful spot really and let's go over and see Percy. Oh he has cleaned it, look, jeez. Or is that a new stone? That's a new stone isn't it? So interestingly he didn't actually die abroad but he did die of his, his wounds, wounds yeah. um, in London. He died at uh, Tootin Military Hospital um, it says on his uh, um, certificate from um, the medical officer that um, he had double pneumonia, which I think was probably a euphemism at the time for something they were just getting into and perhaps not fully aware of, which was the Spanish flu. So a lot of young men in particular, and particularly those who had maybe low immunity, and in this case Percy would have had low immunity because of his wounds, um, died of the Spanish flu just after the First World War and for another year or so afterwards. And the um, Spanish flu was the last really big pandemic to hit Europe. Yeah, before COVID. Before COVID. That's right. 19. Yeah. But um, he had a quite an interesting military career, did Percy. Um, he was a local lad, um, born and brought up in Loughborough. Uh, went to the local schools, uh, worked in the local factories. I think he's, he was a, what's called a frimmer, which is basically somebody who works in the hosiery industry and, and trims cloth and, and what have you. And then from there, he went to work at Brush, uh, maybe serving an apprentice or something like that, um, which was uh, electrical works at that time. Uh, made a lot of power transformers. So Still does. Quite, still does, yeah, absolutely. And so quite a high-tech industry in many ways um, and as a young lad he would have joined up he joined the um, the, the second of the fifth uh, Leicestershire regiment um, which was a reserve regiment at that time and, and they stayed reserve um, even after the outbreak of World War One but um, obviously as the war went on a lot of these reserve regiments were called into action um, his particular part of the Leicestershire Regiment were being trained up to go onto the Western Front um, progressively through 1915 and 1916. Um, they was expecting to be called up and they were ready to hit the Western Front um, and all of a sudden something changed um, and they were sent on their way to Liverpool um, to get on the, um, I think it was called now, I think it was um, something like the, wasn't it Her Majesty's ship, merchant ship, Ulster. SS Ulster, um, and they were sent to Dublin. So, um, so there's Percy on um, SS uh, Ulster going to Dublin and probably being told what they were going, what they were heading in for on that ship, which was basically to quell 
the Irish uh, Rebellion um, of Easter 1916. Um, so he would have found himself there with his colleagues um, in Dublin fighting the uh, the rebels or the revolutionaries or no matter what else you want to call them um, heroes um, and they also did a lot of cleanup work um, in Southern Ireland. Now at some point um, Percy decides to uh, I think that the process at, at that time was called re-enlistment so a new regiment had been set up in 1915 uh, called the Machine Gun Corps. Um, I think uh, Winston Churchill had a hand in it um, because of the massive losses on the Western Front due to machine gun fire. Um, the British Army realises they need to be much more professional at how they go about organising themselves with that particular weapon. So they set up this dedicated corps, the machine gun corps, in 1915. So they're looking for recruits um, and they're looking for sharp, fit men to take on and manage this weapon, on, uh, on, particularly on the Western Front. And Percy obviously gets wind of this and decides to join up. Um, another reason why he might have joined up was that their main centre was actually in Belton, in Lincolnshire, which is not a million miles away from Loughborough. So maybe he's thinking that he's going to do some um, training not far away from his friends and family. So out, out of all the, the graves here, you know, we were particularly out to search for something of, of standout interest. And both me and Paul were drawn to this particular grave of Percy's because Machine Gun Corps was something, something different. We hadn't seen that kind of... Uh, well, actually, it got closed down in 1922, so there's not a lot of history about it. It's a lot of mysticism about it. But when we delved into it, it was one of the biggest uh, regiments um, of the First World War. Over 150,000 men were actually trained in the Machine Gun Corps. So we searched for him and uh, we found him and we found the fascinating history behind him and uh, also the Machine Gun Corps. We came in search of Percy Onions and we found him. <laughs> 